Yeah, we're live on Facebook. Cool. We are. Yeah, so we'll see how Very it cool. does. And uh, let's see. For those of you guys tuning in, look, we'll get started at 10 o'clock. Just stand by until then, all right? I can play us some music. There you go. Casey and the Sunshine Band, right? I heard right? it uh, from the Morning North Shore. Yes. Yeah, I'll get us some background going. Makes it fun. Absolutely. Actually, I was sharing with the group this morning on some jazz because there's so much so many studies that are done on what classical music Bach um, as well as jazz what it does for the brain as that white noise or background and so I actually did a segment with Keller this morning on that so that's pretty cool so here we'll get some here we'll check out this positive tell me if you can hear it okay. no I didn't have my headphones to pick it up I can, yeah, I can hear it. Absolutely. Okay. I always think, oh, you know what? I could be a better host and like, stuff like the music and the fun stuff. That's good. <laughs> I'm always like, uh, oh yeah, that. Let's see. Do a search. Good morning, you oh, guys. I've learned so much. Maybe just do some KC. <laughs> hey, I grew up on all that. Oh, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some energy. Oh, yeah. Hey, good morning, you guys. Hey, Jamie, Lori, and Juliana. Hey, you guys. We'll get started soon at 10. Everyone will be jumping in between the two places. Hey, if you don't mind, do you want to share uh, Good Morning North Shore, the, the, the Facebook link on the chat? Uh, for the yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm actually working from my phone. So let's get on here. So just, I'll just put in there the good. Oh, I don't have the actual link saved. I thought I had it in my notes. Yeah, Courtney. I actually, we'll, I actually I don't. Okay. Yeah. If you don't mind. I, I'm, I actually, I wanted good. to make sure we have good. My phone has better, I never have those glitches with these Zooms when I use the internet through my phone. So actually I'm using that and my laptop is on standby. I know, it's, it's figuring out what works well, right? I, uh, yes. My office in Madisonville, um, I've done one from there, testing out how it is versus from home. Just trying to see what works. Look at Lindsay Keen on here. Hey, my girl, I recognize that name. <laughs> I'll say, uh, Lindsay, if you can, if you're, if you're listening right at the second, but I was, uh, we were talking this morning on my staff. Um, we have a staff huddle every morning for about an hour. So I was on that just before this. And one of my uh, coaches was sharing about this gentleman that um, is, um, doing ghost tours um, in New Orleans with his phone and he's like by himself you know this the streets are empty and he's walking around and he's giving the history behind all these ghost tours in New Orleans and they were just cracking me up so they sent the link I have to go check it out but I was thinking of you Lindsay whenever they were sharing that story can they do tours in the NOLA area so yeah I thought it was pretty That's cool really funny. Yeah, I it so Kristen was sharing that Lindsay and she shared it and she's just getting so excited and, and about it and um and she was just like, Y'all, this was so cool. I mean, this guy I mean, first of all, it was eerie that all the streets of New Orleans was just vacant, right? Yeah. And crazy. um and so this guy's just walking around to all the places where the normal ghost tours happen. And he's just a spectator and he was like, I'm a sh I don't know if all this stuff is true. It's just what I've heard and what people have told me. And he's just having fun. And I was like, 
That is so cool. That's fun. That's really funny. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, for my tours, I can't do it because it's food and cocktail history. So it I would know. just look like me getting drunk. Just me getting drunk. <laughs> so. I have thought <laughs> about you often. <laughs> yeah. I have thought about you often knowing that um, that industry for you, right? Like that's, you know, that's part of your living is being compromised yeah. right now. And man, we've got to get this back up and going for so many people like you, Lindsay. It's, oh, I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Plus, I just miss all my people, Courtney. I mean, I'm grateful oh for Zoom, but missing my people. <laughs> Look, we got to check on us extroverts. We're not doing well right now, right? Right. And even right. then, I think there's a level that uh, I think I saw a meme that said, you know, for the people who like cancel events, you know, in the future, I'm going to think I'm still going to cancel, you know, but I'm going to think twice because I gonna remember what this time did to me, like when I couldn't go out. But yeah. Uh, yes, for sure. For sure. Well, good stuff. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started, you guys. I know people often jump on on the different, the two different platforms between our Zoom or Facebook Live, but regardless, hey, good morning, you guys. I uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, I actually had to triple check that it was Wednesday, right? Yes. <laughs> it's uh, the way that it's happening around here, you guys, is, is it's like which way is up, which way is down, but Nonetheless, um, I'm excited you guys are here. I'm excited to hear from Dawn. I know I have my, um, I have my, my notebook out to take some notes. And I'm looking forward to it. So, um, so real quick, I'm just going to jump into just a few announcements, just a few, just a few things, and then um, from there we'll go ahead and let Dawn get started. But um, for those of you who are either new to this, um, this is your first webinar with us, or you're new to North Shore Rhea, but my name is Courtney Fricky. I run North Shore RIA, and what it is is it is a meetup um, centered around the North Shore, but we do cater to a lot of people in our region. But what we do is, outside of COVID-19, we usually do two to three meetups a month. They're free to the public, and the goal is to just raise the tide in the real estate investing community, as well as the, um, as well as even to the real estate professionals in our area, raising the tide of education. Uh, trying to clean up the industry in a part, there's a level of that. And one way you do that is just through education, right? Um, and, and doing our best so that we can continue to uh, learn about real estate investing and do it in a group. There's a level that it's a group effort. So it's educational and networking wise um, because real estate investing, it, it changed my life. I know the power that the, that real estate can, can bring. It is one of the leading factors of building wealth um, historically just, throughout. And so if you're either interested in um, real estate investing or you're a real estate professional in the, the Southeast Louisiana region, you're always welcome to join in. Um, I know that whenever we go back to be able to meet in person, we generally meet in the Slidell, Covington, and Hammond areas throughout the month. Um, but these webinars, a lot of times we will live stream our events. So, so stay tuned. Um, keep in mind um, during COVID, we are trying to do as many of these that we can these webinars um, I'll tell you guys about a few upcoming ones soon and so um, so we're gonna keep all participants we're gonna keep you guys muted especially in the zoom part um, actually Facebook live I don't even know if you can do like talk <laughs> but nonetheless on the group um, the group chat part so in the comment section on Facebook live and in the group chat part on zoom if you've got any questions um, for Dawn or you myself go ahead and post it there I'll make sure to monitor so that you're questions won't be missed. Um, and that goes the same for all of our, our webinars. We want you to be able to interact and, and to be involved. Um, I'm bringing in different speakers from different, different parts of the industry and different backgrounds. And so there's a great opportunity here. Um, I've already posted in the comment section a few things. So first of all, I posted on there. Um, Dawn has a Good Morning North Shore um, Facebook page where she goes live in the morning at 7 a.m. It's fantastic. And so I posted the link to that there. Um, and then we've got, um, there's a group that North Shore RIA, we host, it's called Southeast Louisiana Real Estate Investors. And if you want to join a local group, it has 1500 plus investors from our region. And that's where a great daily interaction, hey, if you're looking for recommendation on a lender or a contractor, or hey, you have a deal that you want to share to investors, or you're looking for one or, or whatever that may be, or, you know, I try to do my best to share articles that are relevant and that are helpful. And, and things along those lines. So it's a great forum of sorts, right? Um, so if you're a local investor, real estate professional, I invite you to join that group. Um, I put the link for that 
And lastly, if you want to stay in tune with our upcoming webinars, um, make sure you like our, our business page, the North Shore Real Estate Investors, because anytime there's a new event, you get notified through that. Um, and then also, you know, these events are free. We have a handful of local um, sponsors who help us to provide this for the community where it's not like people have to pay a membership to be a part of it or anything along those lines. And so I'm actually just gonna acknowledge those people right now. They are, um, a lot of times, first of all, these aren't people who just come to me and, and it's just anyone, everyone can become a sponsor. These are people that I believe in. These are people who, often people ask me for um, referrals and things along those lines. And the goal here is to work with people who, who do good business. You wanna do good business with good people. And so, uh, so a few of them we've got, we've got Christina Russo with Loan Depot. She's a lender. Um, we've got Florida Lead Title. They're a local title company. I actually have a closing at four o'clock today. And so I'll be heading over there in Covington, uh, selling one of my flips today. Looking forward to that. Um, that's always a good day. Uh, Mia Rogers, she's with Engel and Volker. She's an investor herself as well as a realtor. And she is licensed in Louisiana, Mississippi. Um, so we've got also Wayne Sanji and Associates. They're property managers on the North Shore and South Shore. Um, we've got Total Con Construction Renovation. They're a local, uh, they're a contractor. They help do renovations. They can even oversee a flip for you. Um, or if maybe you need to do, say, a turnover or update a, um, a rental. We've got Quest Trust. Uh, this is a um, retirement account company who helps with like self-directed IRAs and things along those lines. That's actually where a lot of my private lenders, um, where I source them is through utilizing their, um, their retirement accounts to help fund my deals and they get, uh, I know that the closing I have today has a uh, private lender and they are stoked. Um, we've done a few deals with them and they're always like, hey, when's the next one, when's the next one? And so because they're loving these returns that they're getting and especially during uncertain times, they're, they're, they're excited to be able to have something like the collateral of real estate, you know, we're able to get these deals um, and turn around and give some safe returns. And so uh, Quest Trust, they're a great resource. They're really big on in, um, educating the investor community on um, different options. And so uh, we've got Bob Norton, he's a, re he's a real estate specific CPA. So a lot of you guys, um, one, he's a great asset with everything with the SBA loans right now. I know that is a, it is a little bit of chaos right now, um, just with everything going on with that, but he is real estate specific. He is not only an, um, is he a CPA, but he's a broker and he's an investor. Um, I, I breathe this, I, I definitely was breathing a sigh of relief when I found him because I felt like I didn't have to educate my CPA, um, any longer. Uh, for the most part. And then, so we've got Justin Harris, he flips and he sells land. And lastly, my company, Deep Roots Property Solutions. Um, I have some exciting news coming to you guys soon. So maybe uh, next week, stay tuned. I'm going to be um, rolling out some exciting news of some stuff that I'll be doing um, with my new business partner, Paula Grange. And so keep, keep your eye out for that. Um, so yeah, uh, lastly, just last little bit, stay with me here before we're going to let um, Dawn jump on. But Lastly, um, these upcoming webinars that we have, um, I am going to be doing, um, I've invited someone to come and share, actually Paula Grange, one of my business partners, him and his wife are very um, wise when it comes to financial investments, just their personal finances, as well as they've owned multiple businesses and um, successfully. And so they're actually gonna come on and they're gonna do a series of webinars on financial literacy. And all that really means is how to understand your finances and how to be a good steward on your, on your finances and how to be a good steward during times like this, whether that's your personal finances or your business finances, because here's the thing guys, investing in real estate is great, but there's so many things that can derail us. Um, and one of them being just money management. Look guys, I frequently work pre foreclosures and one of the number one things I try to do is try to be holistic, meaning most people who are, facing a foreclosure is because of just money management issues. And I don't want to, maybe that's buy their house or do whatever, and they just go ahead into the next house and it just sets them up for another foreclosure in a few years, whatever that may look like. And so know that at the base of it all, guys, um, it's some very vital tools. Um, so stay tuned for that. So it's gonna be basically a series on ma money management and how to do that wisely during this time. 
Um, I'm also going to be doing a few different webinars um, for land, specifically for landlords, buy and holds. Uh, one of them is going to be a, like a landlording 101 to kind of be as an introduction. I'm also going to bring on some friends who have, you know, 50 plus units um, and they are how they're, you know, how they're dealing with COVID-19. So anyway, I'm working on bringing one more um, and doing webinars during this time. Guys, if you ever want to request a certain topic or anything like that, let me know and I'll use my my network, my resources, do my best to bring that on. But without further ado, guys, just a few last things. If you to remind you guys, we're going to keep the participants muted. Um, but if you have questions, whether you're on Facebook Live or on the Zoom, um, in the comment section on Facebook Live or in the chat part down at the bottom of your screen, you see that little chat section. You can leave questions there for Dawn, and I'll make sure she hears them. But um, nonetheless, without further ado, Dawn, I'm excited to hear from you. If you just don't mind. Um, sharing a little bit about yourself and, um, and, and, you know, the good morning North Shore part. I know I briefly went over it, but, um, yeah. but Dawn, I, I had, it's been a pleasure getting to know you over the last little bit. And every time um, we interact, it's always, it's always a good time. Yeah. Courtney, I'm so excited to be a part of this, especially because you and I talked when we first met that how I even got introduced into real estate was through a real estate investment group just like this. So I have a huge heart for all of you that are on this, whether you're joining us right now with Zoom or Facebook Live, whether you're an investor, you want to become an investor, I just love you if you're here for that, or you're working with investors. Um, maybe it's some fellow realtors that are also on here as well. And so um, I wanna take you guys back a little bit. Um, well, you know, maybe I should share for a second, Courtney, a little bit about me so that you guys understand because as we're all working from home right now, um, I am a mom. I have five kids and two dogs. Um, and so I do understand, I just want to lift all of you up as you're wanting and, and, and really trying to navigate your careers right now from a work from home environment. Um, you know, there's, there is so much good that is going to come out of this quarantine time and yet I do know for some of you um, that are watching today or maybe you're watching this later on today when you come back and review it that this is a hard time for you and so I just want to say that you know this is something we're wrapping our arms around each other as we get through this um, and so it's an honor to be able to be here with you guys and so with that being said I want to take y'all back on a little journey um, because one of the things that we've heard a lot is the beginning of this quarantine started to happen or, you know, as COVID-19 started to impact the United States, we started hearing the word, these are unprecedented times, right? And, um, and I was even using that word and um, social media was saying it, mainstream media was saying it. And, um, and I remember even telling my staff and the people in my sphere, like, this is uncharted territory. Like here in South Louisiana, we know about how to hunker down, right? We get hurricanes and so we know how to go and do that. And yet this was different, felt different. There was even a little bit of fear coming into place. I mean, for Katrina, we threw parties, right? People were throwing hurricane parties and, and that's what we do. For this, we didn't we weren't allowed to do that. We couldn't do that. We couldn't get with our people and be able to fellowship in that way. So fear started to come in for a lot of people. And so that's why that word unprecedented times was showing up and in uncharted territories. And at first I, I bought into that. And yet I wanna encourage you guys today as we're talking about investing in you is to be careful of what we hear and what we take in because for many of you on here, not knowing all of your ages, if I was to take you back in time to the year 2000, or really it's 1999, maybe I'd take you back to the year 1999 when we were talking about the Y2K, when we were talking about 2000, right? And all the things that was gonna happen, there was a personal fear on some people for attack of losing all of their data or being exposed and you know, computers just crashing and, and, and you know, the, the media then, because we didn't have Facebook, uh, yet the media then was telling us that, you know, that the world could crash, right? And so there was this fear at that time. Small business owners were nervous. Investors were no, nervous. Not sure about banking and lending. There was a lot of uncertainty and yet, such great things came out of that time. Now I could go way back and share with you guys, and actually I would love to do that, 
and my, you know, throughout our time together, I'm be sharing a bunch of books with you, but the first book, and I know it's coming up backwards, but you'll get the point here. The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Highly recommend that you guys open up that book and read it. I read it in one day. It's a small book. You guys can do it. You can break through this. Yet, let me share a couple things with you to set your mind for our time together. In 1929, when the market was crashing, again, probably the media was saying then, unprecedented times, uncharted times, yet the market was crashing. Fortune Magazine was created, came out of that, okay? In 1973, during the oil crisis, FedEx, good old FedEx, was birthed. UPS came out of the panic of 1907. Walt Disney during the crash of 1929. Hewlett Packard during the Great Depression of 1935. Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab during the market crash, a market crash, so an economic crash of 1974-75, Charles Schwab was founded. Standard Oil, well, Rockefeller bought out his partners in 1865 in the final year of the Civil War to, to have what we know as Standard Oil, course you know, that mountain beer, okay, came out of the depression of 1873. Costco, during the recession of the late 70s, 1970s. Revlon, those great products that we get from Revlon, came out of the Great Depression of 1932. General Motors, out of the panic of 1907. Procter & Gamble, out of the panic of 19, I mean, I'm sorry, 1837. United Airlines, the genesis of United Airlines in 1929. Microsoft poked its head out of its garage during the recession of 73 and 75. And then finally LinkedIn, which a lot of you are using because you're business professionals, LinkedIn came during the post.com bubble in 2002. So guys, great things have come out of unprecedented times, uncharted times. And if you've read Napoleon Hill's book, think and grow rich, you know it's really about mindset. And so if I take you back again to 2000, when the world was so confused about what was going to happen, you know, one of the things that I was doing at that time, I was in corporate America. Well, let me tell you, I like to be cool for a second and say I was a drug dealer, right? I was, I was a drug dealer in the year 2000. Yes, in corporate America, pharmaceutical rep for the largest pharmaceutical company at that time in the world. And I was watching all the things that was happening. And during that time, I started protecting my mindset. I was actually introduced to John Maxwell, which many of you know John Maxwell. And I started realizing that I couldn't listen to the words and the things that everyone was saying around me because great things happen during bad times. And so that year, I decided to leave a corporate job and open up my own small business during a time where most small businesses were worried if they were going to make it. During a time that no bank was interested in loaning anybody money to open up a small business, I made a decision to leave a very cush job as a drug dealer and go and embark on opening up my own coffee shop and cafe. Now, I would love to tell you that it was in a, a well-trafficked um, area, that it was in a place where, you know, it would make sense to have a coffee shop. Well, it wasn't. I mean, many of you on here probably know the town Luling, Louisiana. Well, if you know Luling, it's industrial capital of the South right? It's chemical plants. These guys don't pay for lattes and cappuccinos. They like their convenience store coffee. Yet I had read books. I had been in coffee shops. I had that experience. I had read some business models and decided that if I was going to do it, I have to do it now. So I made a decision at that point to go ahead and take a leap of faith, to go ahead and invest and my American dream. And that a dream was to open up my own coffee shop. So in August of 2000, I did that. And, I, and a year and a half later, I opened up my second location. And then guys, in, by 2004, I had sold my first franchise, got it approved by the state of Louisiana, sold my first franchise in Thibodeau, Louisiana. 
right? Now, I'm a, I'm a girl from the North Shore. I grew up in Bush, Louisiana. So I'm telling you about locations that wasn't even in my comfort zone, wasn't even locations that I grew up with and knew people from, right? And yet, I took a leap of faith. I took a risk. And, and, and eventually sold seven franchises of my company. Now I grew a really nice organization. I absolutely love my baristas, had a hundred of them and little board of directors and franchise owners. And, um, and I realized at that time that I was shifting again. I was actually pivoting again in my life. And, and at that time I started reading some more books and I decided that it was time as a mom of three at that point to sell my entire corporation because I really wanted to stay home and focus on my children and be able to be a stay at home mom. Um, and so I sell my entire corporation and I, I go home and I begin that process. Well, just as I was teaching my kids in school and, and learning and protecting their mindset, something I was doing for myself was also reading. I was also gobbling up books because, see, I'm a country girl. But I grew up with very simple means. So hopefully this will encourage someone out there. It doesn't matter your past or where you came from, because by all odds, they were stacked against me. I should not be who I am today. And it's all because I decided to read books and, and see the testimonies of successful people, people who were overcomers, people who did amazing things when the odds were against them, right? And so it was also the first time in my life that I had a significant amount of cash. By selling my company, I had cash. Now, my family is not the people that I would go to for financial advice, and maybe some of you can identify with that. I couldn't go to them and say, hey, what do I do with this money? How do I invest it? What should I do? They would not be giving me good advice, so I had to go and read some books. Now, I hope you got your pen and paper down, because as I mentioned, the obstacle is the way a book I also mentioned Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. This next book was really a life-changing book for me. And I want you to make sure you write it down, and, and maybe you've read it, yet if you haven't read it, doesn't matter what your real estate journey is looking like for investing or anything like that. It is a book that you need to read, and it's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That book in itself changed my world. It created a huge shift and me, and my mindset, and my actions. And it led me to the second book, which was Cashflow Quadrant. And so when you start reading these books and you understand how money works and you understand the quadrants of being an employer or being self-employed or being a business owner, and then ultimately to achieve the investor status, right? You start learning those quadrants. And so many of you right now, you might, you might be in that first quadrant thinking about how do I get to that second quadrant? Or for all of my real estate agents that are watching right now, um, you're in, you might be considered in that self-employed quadrant, or maybe you've formed your own business, your own LLC, and you've moved over to that business owner quadrant, yet you're still not experiencing some of the benefits and joys of that world. And so I, you know, I, I read that book and then I read another book that you have to write down because it was the book that had the worksheets in it that set me on my path to investing. And that book was called The Millionaire Real Estate Investor, M-R-E-I. Now I will tell you, if I can be very honest and transparent with, transparent with you guys, I thought the book had a cheesy title. I didn't like the title. Yet when I opened the book, and I saw worksheets and forms that I could follow, that's when I decided to come into the real estate world. I felt like I had a plan at that point. So I actually bought my first investment property. Now, this is 2008. Uh, guys, go ahead and put it in the chat. You know what happened in 2008, right? It was another unprecedented time unchartered time as we knew it as the market was crashing as as more and more properties were going into foreclosures and short sales and so i seized an opportunity now look i bought my first property and then realized i had a, an option to go and get my real estate license that actually by getting my real estate license i could keep more of my commissions to reinvest so that's why i got my license that's why i decided to come into the real estate journey 
uh, on this real estate journey as a as an agent. And, and yet, the life changing moment really was buying that first investment property, taking that risk. You know, during a time that the market was so ripe for that. And so, um, for those who are watching Facebook Live or here on Zoom, I want you to just think about where you were in 2008. What were some of the things that were going through your mind during that time? I'd love to hear about it, put it in the chat box so we can read that. And, and Courtney, I know you're following the Facebook Live. And, and so, you know, I would love to know what were your thoughts during that time, right? Because that was another time somewhat similar, different, but somewhat similar to what we're going through right now. You know, um, and so back in 2008 and 2009, as I embarked on this real estate journey, I had some big questions to ask myself. And yet one of the big things I started looking at is like, what opportunities are before me, right? How do I seize opportunity? Like I was sharing with you guys at the beginning of this, these organizations, these companies that were birthed out of crisis, a pandemic crisis or an economic crisis. I realized that in every situation, there's an opportunity. You know, and Courtney and I talked about that um, just recently as well, is that we have to look at everything as not good or bad. It's all about what opportunity is present. You know, how do we help enough, Zig Ziglar says it, right? How do we help enough people get what they want, right? Well, if we help enough people get what they want, we'll get what we want, right? That's what Zig says. And so um, in these situations, we're looking for those opportunities. And so I started writing down and journaling during that time what opportunities were before me, right? And I started dreaming and I started creating. And in a little bit, I'm going to share with you of how I collectively put my thoughts together to create a plan, right? Yet I just started writing. Um, one of the things like I like, I'd like to uh, geek out on and nerd out on our index cards. Now I used to start with those little white ones that we're all familiar with from grade school. And then I realized there were these big ones, these jumbo ones that come in all different colors. I love these things because they allow for me just to dump ideas. And so I want to show you guys, like I have a stack here, you know, just dumping all my ideas on all these index cards as they come. Because here's what I know about for you guys as well, thoughts will come so quickly into our head. And if we don't write them down and put them on paper, they're fleeting, right? We might forget about it. Or if you're like me, sometimes I have all these thoughts and I'm sitting here thinking, I, I don't need to act on any of those. So if I write them down and then I get to reread them and I get to go and look at them, I can back up and say, oh, that might just need to stay on the index card that might not need to be implemented, right? And so I want you to, to start looking at how to journal your thoughts. Well, I was doing that in 2008, 2009, 2010. I was literally writing down what opportunities that I have before me, right? Um, and then that led to two things that I wanna share with you right now that I hope are great takeaways from our time together. The first was intentional reflection. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Intentional reflection. John Maxwell actually taught me this. I was part of his coaching community, um, like I said, in 2000, and I still am. So I like to say I've been a student of his um, for 20 years now. But John Maxwell taught me about intentional reflection. He has a great book called Intentional Living. Well, he has a lot of great books, but Intentional Living talks even more about that. And so this is where you personally reflect, like you slow down and you're doing this every day where you're reflecting over your day. And one of the questions that I like to ask myself during my inflection, I mean, reflection time is what blind spots do I have in my life? Um, we all have them. So I want you to just picture right now you're driving your car and maybe you are while you're listening to this, but you're driving your car, we know when we look at our, out of our mirror that there is a, a spot that is called a blind spot. And in heavy traffic or distracted moments, we'll, you know, we might use our mirror in general, but if there's heavy traffic and we know that we could miss a blind spot, what do we do? We don't just trust the mirror. What do we do? We actually will turn while we're, so we're driving, we'll actually turn 
to check the blind spot. Because we know it's there. We're not exactly sure exactly where, but we just want to make sure there's nothing in the blind spot that will harm us, right? And so we have blind spots in our life that might harm us. They're not intentional. They're just things about us that unrecognized could be holding us back in our life. And so in my reflection time, I will step, stop and look at, okay, what blind spots did I not see today? Now, because they're blind spots, you might not see them at all. And this is why a coach is so important or, 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 or a friend who can be truly honest with you is so important because they will recognize your blind spots for you. And they'll tell you, hey, I, you might not have realized that you did this or that you do this. You might not recognize that, uh, that in certain situations you respond this way, right? And you might not recognize that some blind spots with your finances or maybe with your investing or with your job, right? And so you wanna start having an awareness around that. Now, I'd like to also use this analogy. I had, a, had someone that I knew once in my life that when they had blind spots, well, they knew they had blind spots, right? We had them in the car. They had like mirrors everywhere. They had, um, you know, extra, extra little mirrors on the rear view mirror, extra little mirrors on their side mirror. They actually had another mirror that stuck out. Like they were so worried about the harm of the blind spot that they even went and tried to prepare and put up all of these mirrors all over their car to, <coughs> excuse me, to catch the blind spot. Okay, those mirrors are very important in our lives. And so what are those mirrors in our personal life? They're coaches, they're accountability partners. Y'all, Courtney, they're groups like this that you have. These are great mirrors or blind spot detectors because just like you guys that are involved in this group, when I went to my first investment group, they were sharing their testimonies. They were all sharing the things they messed up on. They were sharing some of the things that they learned. And I was like, whew, I'm glad I learned that from their mistake so that I don't have to hit that mistake or do that mistake, right? And so they were exposing some blind spots in the real estate industry that I would not have been aware of. And my mirrors that I had I might not have detected it, but they become an extra mirror to expose, right? And so asking yourself right now, what blind spots do I have in my life? And who can be honest with you? You know, I give my spouse, my husband's name is Manly. I give him permission and, and he takes it freely to just really point out my blind spots. You know, a lot of times he watches my videos and goes back and critiques me and he gives me a list. He's like, you said this, or you're Notice you're doing this and to coach me into becoming a better speaker, to coach me into becoming a better leader, right? And so who in your life right now, maybe right now while you're, if you're not driving and you've got your book and your pen and paper, quickly jot down the names of those people who are your mirrors in your life that are able to give you that feedback that you need to dis discover blind spots, okay? And then... You know, the other thing during this time with the intentional reflection, you want to ask yourself, um, or you want to really dig into the thing of, you know, what can you afford not to keep doing the same way? So let me say that again. So there's things that you're doing right now that honestly you can't afford to keep doing in the current circumstances. Um, just before all of you guys got on, Courtney and I got on Zoom first and we were even talking about Zoom and that just four or five weeks ago, most of us probably have never been on Zoom before. Maybe you're somebody right now that's on, that you, this is your first Zoom or, or maybe this is like your first Facebook Live event that you've been on. I know I have friends that have never been on Facebook. It's very interesting. They're now on Facebook. Well, because they want to connect and they know if you've taken away my physical space, I can go meet with you virtually and so now they have facebook accounts there's a lot of things that you have done in your business right now or in your personal life that are just different you've adapted you've changed you've also got rid of some things in your life and probably if you're like me there were things that i knew that i needed to get out of my life and yet just never took the energy to do it or it was too uncomfortable to do it and yet out of necessity now i must do it and so what things do you need to cut 
out of your life in order for you to move forward with your goals and your dreams. You know, um, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, the book that I mentioned. You know, it's being able to look at obstacles that come into your life with a different mindset. It's being able to look at this time that we're in and saying, okay, I'm wanting to invest in and rental property, I want to invest in flipping a house, you know, what obstacles are going to come my way? Because they will, right? They will. Well, this group can help share those obstacles. And even though we share them, you have to be willing to accept them. You have to know that they're coming, right? I mean, I'm sure, Courtney, you could tell everyone, like, you've never, I know you've done a lot of properties, and I, I would imagine that every property's had an obstacle that you had to overcome. Matter of fact, Courtney, when you and I talk, you like to say that you're a problem solver, that like, really, that's what you, you love to solve problems. That means overcoming obstacles, guys. That's what's so good about that. Okay, so then the second thing, so the first was intentional reflection. The second thing is having a true, honest, observation. Okay. What does that mean? That's asking yourself the hard questions that you could ignore, but no longer can or, ha or haven't had the time to ask. Um, John Maxwell, another great book. He says, good leaders ask great questions. What questions are you asking yourself? Now I'm going to be sharing so much with you guys that are personally that this is a personal journal that I have. Um, actually, this, this actual one, it's amazing how good it looks, but I guess because it's always here on my desk where I write, um, is 15 years old. 15, this journal. And so it has a refill in it. And so I have a, on my bookshelf, I have all the inserts sticking out there over the years. But one of the things you can see is I just kind of write, um, there are days in here where I'm journaling. This is my personal journal. So it's not my fitness or I have a fitness journal. You know, I have I actually have multiple journal, prayer journal, all that. This is my personal, just what you would consider your personal journal journal. Okay. Um, there are pages in here or entries for the day that are in there that every, every, every line is a question. In other words, there are no statements being stated or said. They're all questions. And on those days, the reason I write all questions down is because I might be struggling with something. I might be closed minded about something, or I might have a problem that I'm struggling to solve, or I have an obstacle that I can, I, I'm, I'm not overcoming. Right. And to be honest with you guys. And so what I do is I unlock this mind by asking questions. I literally sat, sit down and and just write questions. So at the beginning of the coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic for us, I just started writing questions. Questions like, what does this mean for my office? What does this mean for my staff? What does this mean for my family? What, is, what does this mean for my children? You know, I have a, my oldest out of our five kids is a senior, you know, and um, what does this mean for her, for her senior year? What does this mean for my dogs to go to a groomer, right? So I just started asking myself that question. And yet one of the questions that I asked myself is who will I become at the end of this? Now, let's go five weeks back and, and, and asking like, when this is over, who will I become? Who will I become? Because right now you've been given a gift, an opportunity, an environment to be tested and refined, just like gold, in order to gold become what it is, it has to go through that refining process or something that we like to say in my, in my world is no pressure, no diamonds, right? No pressure, no diamonds. If you think about coal, it's ugly, it's yucky, yet under intense pressure, we have something so valuable as a diamond. And so right now we're in that season. And so maybe a question you need to write down today is who will I become when we exit out of this, right? Who will I become? So asking all these questions of yourself and on your business, or maybe you have a team, maybe you have a group of people that work with you, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you might have to ask this tough question. You might have to say, who are the weak links on my team? What systems are failing? What financial decisions do I need to remove? What decisions were successful? 
okay, and here for all my investors, I mean, right, this is my investor group here, what ROI am I getting through this opportunity, right? So asking ourselves those questions will help to navigate through what we're going through, right? Um, and so, so we want to do that. Now, the third thing, the third thing that we want to um, reflect on is called purposeful projection. Now, we talked about, you know, reflection. We talked about observation. And now we got to go ahead and make a decision of how we're going to move forward. What is that going to look like when we move forward, right? And so how do we make the plan? Well, I want to share with you guys today a system that I use, um, that I have been using for, I think it's either six or eight years. I want to say eight. I know for sure six years. Um, a system that I use that after I've done the, the personal growth, the reading of the books, attaching my blind spot mirrors, right? That's my coaches and my accountability partners. Um, after I've done all of that, I have to have a plan. I gotta have the business plan. I gotta have the personal plan, right? And so what that is called for me, it's called the 411, okay? And so um, I could literally teach for a whole another hour on it, but I'm gonna give you the gist of it. And I think that you guys could go and implement this very easily. So what the 411 is, is where you look at your annual goals. Now, most people want to do this in January. Here's what I say. We don't live by the calendar year. I mean, you guys, you're making plans today and through this that honestly starts a whole nother year for you today. So what I do is that I, I usually sit in October. I'll, I'll just be honest, in October, looking at my next year. So October of 2019, I was looking at what did I want to accomplish in 2020. Okay, I didn't wait till January to get started. And so what, so, so what I do is I go and, and I look at my personal life. And in my personal life, I, I break it up into some categories. I look at relationships. What, I, what, what do I want to accomplish in the next 12 months and the, for the relationships in my life? The next one I'm talking about is my health. Okay. For, for some of you, you might not know this, but I'm an ultra runner. And so I, I just, I love to run. And so I have to be intentional with that, especially long distances, right? That takes time and races and all that. So what do I want to do for my health in order that I can be the ultra runner that I want it, want to be? I also have a spot that's for finances. Okay. And in my financial section, I'm, I'm talking about, do I need to get rid of debt? Do I need to save more? Um, for me and for most of you that I know are on this and you're watching and, and, and getting in here, you probably have the same category of wealth building right? What are my intentions around wealth building? What is it that I want to do for wealth building? Okay. And that's leaving ultimately a financial inheritance. That's a financial wealth building is a financial legacy, right? So what do I want to do in the next 12 months for that? And then another category of my personal is just, I call it my spiritual, emotional, um, category, mental. This is like, what do I want to do spiritually? I'm a woman of faith. And so am I going to read through the Bible? I'm going to read certain books of the Bible. Am I do certain devotions? You know, what do I want to accomplish in my spiritual life? And then what do I want to, what do I want my emotional life to be? Do, I don't want to be a basket case every day, right? So how do I make sure I keep my emotions between the lines, right? What do I need to do to work on that? And then the la next one is the mental what books do I need to read? And so I create a list, right? And so I'm making some suggestions to you guys today on books, but I have a list, an ongoing list that when, that when people talk about a book, I put it on there and then I keep it and I keep reviewing it and I keep going through it. And I said, okay, what books do I want to read? And as I read them, I cross them out, right? Now, look, side note here, I'm really glad that books are an essential product because Amazon, Amazon will still deliver. Since our bookstores are not open locally, we can't support them. Amazon can deliver for you and you can get your books delivered straight to your door. So good thing there. Okay, so I tracked that up. On my business side, I'm a business owner. I'm looking at my corporation. As Courtney mentioned earlier, I'm a CEO um, for Keller Williams here on the North Shore. So on my 401, I have what's important for me for 
me as a CEO for my company. The second category is I run a real estate team. I do have a real estate team. And so what's the important and what are the goals for my real estate team? And then, you know, I've got lots of other things around businesses and things that I'm involved in. The Good Morning North Shore. This past weekend, we recorded our first podcast all around this topic. Actually, what I'm sharing with you guys, we are going to be launching our first podcast coming up um, to encourage and equip people to become the best version of themselves. So all that's on there. Once I've identified my annual goals, the next thing that I do is I break them down to a monthly goal. Okay. And I say, okay, if this is what I want to accomplish in the next 12 months, what do I need to do this month? So for the month of April right now, what do I need to accomplish in the month of April in order to accomplish that annual goal? And then I break that down to four weeks, right? So you got our annual goal, which is a one, our monthly goal, which is one, and then four weeks. And then I break down that monthly goal over four weeks. And I ask myself, what do I need to do each week in order to achieve that monthly goal that will then achieve my annual goal? And every Sunday, I have time blocked out a planning period. And what I do is I look at that weekly goal and then I go put it on my daily calendar, y'all. When I say that I'm going to run, you know, 40 miles this week, well, I go and put it on my calendar every day. What am I going to run and how far am I going to run? Let's say your goal is to save your 20% to go buy your first investment property. Well, if you don't break that down to how much you have to save per week and then per day, when you know you have to save, let's just say it's $10 per day and you were to physically take that $10 per day and put it into an account. As you're going through the drive through at Starbucks, you might think twice before you spend your $10. It'll help you look at your finances differently because you're tracking them daily, right? You're becoming very intentional about your spending so that you can save, right? So I break that down. That's called my 411. It is my life on a document. It is who I am becoming on a document. And then my calendar matches that. So if I was to pass away today, if people wanted to know, you know, who is on, they could go grab my calendar, they could grab my 411, they could grab my journals, and they'll get a really good idea of who I have, who I am, and who I was wanting to become through that. And so that's your first system is writing it down. And, and I know to this group, because you guys are all growth mindset. I don't need to remind you, yet Harvard Business Review did a study a long time ago, and it's a study that's done every year by someone that shows that the most successful people in the world write down their goals, and we also know that it's only 3% of the population. So what the question I'm asking you guys today, are you willing to be a 3%er? Or, or as my husband and I like to say, we, we call each other one percenters. Are you willing to be a one percenter? right? And what does that take for you to become a one percenter? What books do you need to read? What, what habits do you need to form to become that one percenter? Okay. So let's join that one percenter community, right? And come do that with me together. Okay. The next thing that a next, another system that I want to share with you guys <coughs> that I do, it's called a, it's called a GPS system. Um, it's a navigational system. We also call it a one, three, five. This is where you take each one of your individual goals. So if I may, let me use ultra running because, because it's just something I'm so passionate about. Um, if I was going to go run, let's just say I was going to go run a marathon. Okay. I'm saying I'm going to run a marathon. Well, guys, I couldn't go walk out today and go run it. Right. Right. Could not do that. I would have to work up towards that. Right. And so if the goal is to run, let's say the Louisiana marathon in January of next year, well, what I need to do is now have a, a plan, a navigational system to get me there. And so my first priority might be hire a coach. I might need a running coach. Right. And so my first priority might be a running coach. And now I'm going to have five strategies that will help me to achieve that. It might be my first strategy is to research running coaches. My second strategy might be interviewing at least 10 running coaches. My third one might, my third strategy might be to get on some running coaches blogs or to go follow some on Instagram or Twitter. Um, my fourth one might be to subscribe to 
a, a running like runner's world or trail runner or runner or ultra running magazine um, to learn who the coaches are that are contributing at a high level, right? So I'm going to have five strategies that I'm going to look at into hiring that running coach. And then I'm going to have another priority, a second priority that I need in order to achieve that goal and five more strategies. And then a third priority and five more strategies. I'm creating a plan around my goal. See, the challenge is that most people in January go and write down that they want to lose 10 pounds. And they really want that to happen in one week. And when they recognize that they've only lost a half a pound in a week or one pound, which is what we know is healthy to do, they become discouraged. And, and, and honestly, at the end, they didn't even have a plan. We know this. So if you belong to a gym, you hate the first three weeks of the year because they're packed, can't even get on the treadmill. But we giggle and say, give it three weeks. It'll be empty again. You'll get your parking spot, right? And it's because those people didn't have a plan, guys. They didn't have a plan to implement their goal. So whatever goal. So let's say it's you want to go buy your first investment property. Well, what's that goal? What's your GPS? What is your navigational tool that you need to use to get you through that, right? And so I want to encourage you to create that system, that plan to put that into place. All right. So as I wrap up my portion, because I know that we, we might now at this uh, point, Courtney, have a bunch of questions that have come into place. If I may, since we're talking about investing in you, if you guys are okay with this, I'd like to share some pretty impactful resources with you. I know I mentioned some books, but I want to share some other books with you. Um, I'm just going to hold them up and I'll, I'll read it also. This next book is an oldie but goodie. It's by Robert Schuller. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Okay. A must read. Okay. This is talking about investing in you right now. Okay. Now, I know I don't know everyone, all of you, I know some of you, but I don't know all of you that are on this and on our Facebook Live right now. I don't know, I might not know your story. I might not know your brand. I might not know what you're actually doing for a living, yet you're here for a reason. And what I do know is that even though I don't know your story, you have a story. And so what are you saying? What is your story? How are you creating your brand? And so one of my other big time favorite authors is Donald Miller. And the book is called Building a Story Brand. This is a phenomenal book around branding you, yet ultimately marketing you in a non-conventional way. It goes against probably everything that you've learned. Okay, so I highly want to recommend that. Okay, Simon Sinek. I'm sure you guys are fans like I am of our, of our Simon Sinek. Infinite Games, the, the Infinite Game. A uh, life-changing book, especially right now during this time, because um, most people look at all of this with a finite mindset, because we're finite beings, right? And so the infinite game talks to us about how do we play the infinite game, the game that is not just to win, the game that says, I'm not looking at short-term, I'm looking at long-term. The infinite game is being that visionary that can execute also the plans for the long-term results. So phenomenal. And then lastly, this is a, something that I've been doing for five years now. It is part of my gratitude journal that I have, and it's called the five minute journal, right? All of these resources you can get on Amazon. Um, what the five minute journal does, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see I've made posts in the past. It actually will give you, you know, the date. It will give you a quote, and then it's going to ask you to write the three things that you're grateful for. And then it's going to say, ask you a question that says, what would make today great? And wants you to list three things that would make today great. Then it's going to ask you for your daily affirmation. What are you speaking into yourself, right? For, for me, I've, I, you know, I've changed them over the years. But for right now, my daily affirmation is I'm a disciplined person with my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions so that I may achieve the results that I deserve, right? So that's something I write down every day and I say to myself, and so it's all about controlling my thoughts, right? And my feelings and my actions so that I can get the results that I deserve, okay? And then you, that you start your day with that and then you end your day with 
three amazing things that happened today. So what were the three amazing things that happened? And then the last question of the day, the last reflection question is, how could I have made today even better? So no matter how great your day was, how could I make it even better, right? That will prompt you into that intentional reflection time. Um, and so I hope you have got, you guys have found this valuable. Um, my, my, my um, mission statement, my personal mission statement in life is to create value for others, to impact the lives of others. Um, and so I, I spend every single day just looking at how I can add value to you. And so hopefully you found this rewarding. Um, Courtney, I would love to open it up now. I know we've got you know, plenty of time here for maybe any questions that came up or maybe any questions that you have, Courtney, if we can open that back up. Sure thing. So I, um, thank you so much, Sean, for, for sh sharing. Um, so I am looking on the Facebook um, Live and on um, the group chat for the Zoom meeting. So if you guys have any questions for Dawn, please share here. Let's see. Darren said in 07, 08, he was, uh, they were in college and watched the market correct itself. And they said, I wish I had the information I have today, basically then, right? Um, so we have that, that comment. You know, Courtney, and I would love to, can I speak into that comment for sure. a second? Go you ahead. know, um, you know, we, we say hindsight's twenty twenty, right? We all say that. Sure. That's, you know, Darren, I love that you, you pointed that out. I want you guys to think right now. So here on the North shore, we have about seven more days. And, and you know, as of right now, until they change things, unless they change something this morning, I'm not aware of it. Um, we have about seven more days before they're going to, release up some of this work from home um, that we've been under, right? Opening up some, some businesses and stuff like that. And so I'm challenging the people in my world to say, you, you know that you have seven days now to make the most impact that you can of this time. And so while hindsight's 2020, we also have to be realizing that right now you're given an opportunity and we'll never have all the knowledge. We'll never have all of the experience that we need in the moment. And guys, if I could just encourage you that right now, carpe diem, carpe momentum, cease your day, cease your momentum. See, because right now you have such opportunity to explore. You could be the next great that births something, that the genesis of something that you've done has come out of this, right? You could be the next person that when you look at 10 years from now, they look back and like, gosh, look at what I accomplished at that time. I didn't waste an opportunity um, because here's what I also know guys we're gonna go through something like this again matter of fact like in all seriousness we might come out of this coronavirus Courtney right into hurricane season right absolutely we can it is so. one of those things look I, I was a harbor master for uh, four years and I'm not gonna lie it's first of all I left that in 2017 to go on my own because I was doing this stuff part-time and investing part-time then, um, I'm not gonna lie, like the bad weather we had just recently and other times, I'm always like, I'm so glad I'm not a harp master right now. Look, y'all, I gave my two week notice to that, to, you know, when I quit, when I fired my boss back in 2017, and the two week notice I gave them, y'all, there was a hurricane in that two week notice. I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, right? I go I go to leave being a harp master and of course a little uh, storm came through. But, but no, absolutely, we don't know what will happen. Look, the tornado, the little tornadoes that yeah. you have, right? Imagine not only an economic pandemic, an economic issue, the pandemic going on, and then imagine something like that. That would be unthinkable, right? The reality is, is we haven't had a big storm in a while. So my background as a harbor master keeps, you know, I have that in the back of my mind. Uh, a lot of the people, a lot of my sailor friends, a lot of my boat friends, and the nautical world, they are, they're like, look, we haven't had something big in a while. Um, and that's just a, a recipe for, um, it's just one of those things where it says, oh no, when after a certain time, if you haven't had a storm in a while, you know, it, something will eventually come. And so nonetheless, that is not, we're not trying to speculate or guess anything. We just have our ear to the ground and saying, you know, the things that are brewing, how can I prepare for myself? Um, no, that, actually, that's good, Courtney. And I think it's a great way of stating that. Things are always brewing. It's right. back to you know, the blind side. 
uh, the blind spot conversation is that things are always brewing around us all that we don't, we're not recognizing, we don't see, right? And so we have to, but when they surface, how do we respond to that? Sure. No, that, that's, that's completely, that is completely viable in the sense where it's like during shifts in market, in the marketplace, that is when there's a great transference of wealth. Look, I, I was there, there is, there's nothing, um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I was not investing in real estate in 2008. So this is new for me, but that does not mean that I get to sit on the sidelines, right? Because it doesn't matter if this landscape of an economy is new for me or not, you still, there's so many tools out there. There's so many ways you can set yourself and your business up to actually drive, um, thrive during this time. I know um, whenever you started out in 2008, you started out as a realtor. You didn't have the, my, from the way I heard you guys explain it is you didn't have um, the mindset that you couldn't do well during this time, right? No, Corey, I'm glad that you brought that up. Actually, um, for my real estate agents that are all on this, um, I actually got rookie of the year, my first year in real estate. It was interesting. You know, I was at our board banquet and, you know, got the word. And I remember at that time, a, a leader in my organization, an investor came up to me and said, you know, you, the reason you got that, because you didn't know what you didn't know. And you just put your head down and went and did it. And there's a lot of truth to that. I didn't pay attention to really what was happening around. I wasn't listening to the naysayers. I wasn't listening to the, the fear that was out there. I was just like, I see opportunity. Let's go and help someone. Right. And so, um, for sure, I, you know, I, I look back even in my time of starting Mocha Chinos and, and I had a lot of naysayers y'all like they were wanting to put me in counseling when I was going through that, like a lot of naysayers against me on that. And I, and I look back and there are moments that I'll say, Courtney, I don't know how I got through it. Like, I don't know how I did that. Right. And then I realized, well, it's how we do it. It's how I do everything. I don't listen to the noise. Right. I listen to the inner voice. Guys, y'all have an inner voice inside of you that is way more power. You know what you're capable of. Unpack that, go find it. I think so many people, I want to jump to Jessica's comment in a second, but there's so much, so many moving parts to this going on, right? There is your personal aspect, there's your business aspect. Um, you know, I, there's those memes going around where if you don't come out of this with a new skill or new this or new that, right? It wasn't right. discipline you lacked, it was just, you know, um, it, it wasn't time that you liked it, it was discipline, right? But Correct. then there was also, there's also the memes going around that, hey, we're going through a collective trauma. You don't have to force self-development on yourself during this time. So I, I see both sides to it, right? My sister um, just gave birth to my niece and y'all, yes, it is killing me to not be able to hold that sweet baby um, right now. But I had my four-year-old nephew and my 14-year-old niece. Um, I had them for a week. And then I had them for about four, um, four or five days whenever my sister was in the hospital and, and kind of going through that. And y'all, trust me, it is not, I, I'm not a parent, actually. This is the extent of my parenting <laughs> right here. Um, but, and he's in, and he's low maintenance. But having the kids, y'all, I get it. I was like, I was struggling and I was tired um, and all this stuff, right? But there's so much stuff going on, right? Your, your personal finances may be under attack in some way or another. You may mm -hmm. be not having the income you're used to. Um, who, who knows? But, um, and, and look, your, the normal time you have to do certain things, just all, all these different, there's all these things that are getting thrown at you. And I understand that it's difficult. It is not letting it overwhelm you. Let's, let's talk to this question that Jessica has. She says, great talk, truly inspiring. My question is, how do you overcome time? I'm an essential worker and I have been working seven days on, seven days off since the beginning of the shutdown. When I'm mm. off, I'm tired. So my struggle is finding time to work toward my end goals of being a real estate investor. Still while trying to save money to invest and position myself to properly jump in. Mm. So, do you want to respond to that? 
first? Yeah, Jessica, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your question. And I, and let me first say thank you for your service. I, I don't think you mentioned what you're doing, but seven days long, like that's on seven like that's a lot. And um, I just wanna, I wish I could hug you, but I'm gonna give you a virtual hug right now. I just wanna say thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, Cause obviously if you're an essential worker, it's needed. And so just thank you. So let me speak into that. Um, we have to recognize that there, we're in seasons, right? And we do have, self care is very important. And so if you're in this season, just like you are Jessica right now, where you're, you're giving all this physical energy out and maybe your job is also a lot of mental because I would imagine everybody's got a lot of mental exertion in their jobs right now too. That what's left over, there's such, there's little left over. So prior to COVID-19, okay, many of us wished, like you've seen that going around, wish we had three days to clean, like with three days off, I would get my whole house clean. If I had a whole week off, I would, you know, write a book. We have all these things. And what we're recognizing is that when we're in those situations, some of those things aren't happening because we didn't take into consideration the mental energy that was going to be used up. Right. And so for people like Jessica, when you've got that physical exertion and that mental exertion that's helping right now, that's a necessity, we have to give ourselves some grace. And so Jessica, this is what I would say for you is that look at your goals and the things that you have. And actually I just challenged a lot of our agents in my office and some of my colleagues. And, and I really just did this with my leadership team, my executive leadership team last week. We, we had our annual goals. And then we decided to rewrite them for the next 90 days. So Jessica, I would say, take a look at your goals that you've set. Yes, you probably have these big dreams. It's not a no. It's just saying, okay, let me look at what I've done or what I had planned to do for the year. And what can I do in the next 90 days? Um, and I would rewrite. Don't throw away your business plan or your goal sheet or your 411, right? Don't throw that away. Keep it. Because there's going to come a time where you might be able to go back to that. But right now, go rewrite of what you can do for the next 90 days. And so here's what I usually tell people right now. They're like, you know, maybe it's taking one book and reading one page a day. Like that's all you've got in you. Find what brings you energy. Y'all, for me, I have certain Simon Sinek, John Maxwell. I have certain people that I follow. And my goal is when I get really low, I was like, I'm giving myself five minutes with them on YouTube or five, or maybe it's even longer because some of their stuff's longer, but I'm giving myself whatever that time frame is for just going and let them, me not pouring into someone else, let them pour into me. Let me be a sponge for that. You might be in that season, but I would just, I would rewrite for the next 90 days of what you can do. Excellent, Dawn. Um, Jessica, again, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not sure, sure what your essential work is, but nonetheless, um, yeah, thank you for that. And I, and I get it. Seven days on, seven days off. It's not, not easy. Um, just a few of my thoughts that I have is, is that, look, I would, so I lived overseas for a year. I lived in Thailand for a year and that is a long trek. I'm, I'm talking like 40 hours, you know, you got a 14 hour flight here. You got this one here. I mean, it's just, it's not an easy jump over the pond. Um, and obviously on the back end, I would always have jet lag, right? Uh -huh. And I've traveled to a lot of countries over the years, um, probably about 20 plus countries. And one of my biggest problems is jet lag, right? It, you get there. And so whenever you make that far of a trek, it depends on how long your trip is. If it's the whole time, you're just struggling to stay awake because of jet lag, you're not going to be able to enjoy the time, right? Or seize the moment, right? So one of the things I would, I started doing as I became a more seasoned traveler because I did a lot of nonprofit work overseas and like I actually didn't have time to just like, I wasn't there on vacation most of the time. So I had to get to work, right? There were things that I had to do and obligations. And so one of the things I would recommend is um, as I became a seasoned uh, traveler, I started to proactively fight against well, I started proactively fighting against jet lag, right? I'd go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'd go and I would do um, whatever I would need to, like stay away, do whatever. One of the things I'd recommend is as you're now, you had this new normal, what I'd recommend is, I'd recommend that you would find a way to proactively plan for your time off. Instead of being reactive when you get there and it just derails your plan and you feel like it is running 
running the show for you, I would say find ways to be proactive. Say, hey, while you've got those seven days on, hey, what are these seven days off going to do? And look, even if it's only a small bit of it that you are, you know, able to tackle, you know, seven days, how can I get the rest that I need? How can I do, you know, there's always going to be the personal stuff, the bills to pay, the, you know, take out the trash, do the laundry, whatever. I get that, right? Um, but there's also, um, I'm trying to think, there's a book that I just read at the beginning of this year. If I can remember it, I will. But it talks about how basically motivation and drive, um, it's kind of like a, a tank of gas. You can't run on it and go run forever with it. So you need to do things to put yourself back to where you re-motivate yourself. You only have mm-hmm. so much to give and so much that'll, you know, catapult you forward. So on your days off, you may say, hey, look, I need a one, set myself up for the next seven days of work. But also, hey, if I tackled, if I tackled X, Y, Z during this time, it would be a success during these seven days off. When I make to-do list, I have my on uh, my priority list up top that, hey, if I tackle this today, today would be a success, right? And a lot of times mm-hmm. it helps us go after the priority items, right? Because so many times we can just be, we can be busy bodies. So finding ways to be proactive um, and to not let the seven days off run you, but you run them, right? Yeah. So what I'd recommend during that time is, is um, finding out ways, maybe it is reading books. Um, and look, y'all, I have a goal. Last year I read over 30 books. This year I want to read books as well. But I'm behind right now. I, I, you know, between starting a new partner, business partnership, this stuff going on, there's other things going on. I um, have kind of been inundated this year. And I'm behind on my reading list. So what I've, I'm not a big fan of audio, um, audio books. But reluctantly, I've started adding them because I spend a lot of time on the road. I buy houses and things mm-hmm. like women. Guys, I, I'm, I'm in my truck multiple times throughout the day. And so I said, you know what? So, and look, I'm also being very lean on my expenses right now. So guess what? Instead of getting an Audible subscription, although there's nothing against that, I went and I found, I'm listening to The Richest Man in Babylon right oh, now. Oh, good it's, one. It's, good it's one. up there. It's free. And so um, what we'll do is I want it to um, encourage you because maybe, hey, it's just thinking about things a different way, Jessica, figuring out what those goals, the ones that you had or the goals that you have in general, how can you use this time? And just like she said, no matter what our goals were January 1st, it, is, it would behoove you to go and revisit those goals right now. I know that the minute this stuff really hit us, I think it was March 12th, that we're like, oh, wow, this is really something we need to pay attention to. The minute that happened, I know that we, uh, my business partners and I, we said, let's have a state of the union. I think we met for like three yeah. months. And we said, let's look at everything and reorient it. Look, our goal, um, yeah, I, I think we were, we were looking at doing you know, X amount of transactions each month. And look, that has absolutely changed now, right? Life is... Business as normal is not happening normally, right? So readjusting those goals, but yet this is not the time to say, well, let me count myself out because X, Y, Z is happening or nonetheless, all these different things going on. So, so Jessica, I hope that helps. During this time, one of the biggest things is, um, I know it's hard to save money during this time and different things to position yourself, but that's one of the biggest things I'd recommend is the uh, looking at your finances, leaning them down personally and business-wise. Um, because it is, that is going to be the key to freeing up some money, but also to protect, protect what's going on income wise, because income's uncertain right now. Yeah. Um, but enough with the financial part, because I'm actually going to, we're going to be doing some webinars on that soon, because that's a broad topic, but um, so stay tuned for that, because it's a huge thing you can do during this time, and actually an imperative thing you need to be doing during this time is you're look, taking a look at your finances to set yourself up. Um, because developing yourself, reading these books, yeah. attending webinars and getting accountability is great. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure that this shift doesn't cause, um, a long-term effect on your finances because they were neglected. Yeah. You know, um, Courtney, I'll say too, a good thing for us all to do is take an assessment or inventory of our time wasters. Um, we all have them. And then how can we create hacks around them? Like for instance, 
you know, grocery shopping, can you have ship shopper deliver your groceries so that you don't have to go to the grocery store? You know, there's, I could sit here probably for another hour talking about hacks on becoming efficient around time wasters. We all have them. We all have them. But something that Jim Rohn did, guys, he would actually have on Sunday evenings, he would pick out all of his clothes for the entire week and he would line them up in his closet so he didn't have to waste time thinking about what he needed to wear. And, and the cool thing about it is that when he did that, he also didn't have to use the mental energy either. Look, let's just get real girls, right? From our, I know there's men on here too, but I know for females, I can only speak from a female perspective on this. We spend sometimes way too much time processing what we want to wear. And so to go ahead and have that picked out. So there's hacks that you can do. Um, I'm constantly taking inventory of where, I'm, where am I wasting time, right? And so those things will, will let, give you some leverage into extra time into your days. Sure thing. Uh, and one last thing, Jessica, depending on where your job is, is uh, uh, a filler time would be the time in the car. Like I mentioned the audible because I'm doing so much right now. I haven't been able to get in front of my physical book. So I am trying to maximize my time in the truck when I'm driving. So maybe that's something else too. Lori yeah. asked a um, question. Uh, I'm going to jump on Lori's question, but real quick, um, Paul, my business partner, you said, uh, he said, great encouraging words, Dawn, self assess and identify your strengths so we can just plan and build from there. Um, Thank Lori, you, Paul. Lori asked, if someone wants to have an accountability or goal coach, who or what do you recommend? Are there local options and what sort of price range does this service cost? Yeah, no, that's actually a wonderful question as that's my world. Um, so here's, here's what I usually say. Um, it's not your best friend. So let's just start with that um, because your best friend loves you and wants to encourage you and won't be always super honest with you, right? And here's the other, so on the other spectrum of that is I believe that when you pay for something, you'll have a bigger commitment into it. So I am one that believes in paying for coaching, not utilizing free resources. Now, with that being said, let me just be honest with you guys, John Maxwell was my coach for many years before I could afford to pay for a coach. And so there's a lot of what I would say the John Maxwell's of the world that you can tap into for support, yet that's different than hiring a personal coach, you know, for that. And so, um, so there are lots of options uh, with coaching over the past five to six years exploding there are a lot of coaching. So here's, here's what I tell people when they're looking for a coach. You need to be very clear on what kind of coach you're looking for. In my life, I have multiple coaches. I have a business coach. I have a financial coach. I have, I have a running coach that I pay, right? So I look at all the different areas of my life and I say, where do I want to improve and who am I willing to purchase, you know, buy that coach for to help me get through that. And so, um, so I would recommend looking at your, your, your goals and both personally and for your business, excuse me, and then asking yourself, where's, what area will give me the best ROI this year if I improved in that, in that area? And then that's your first coach that you hire. Now, with that said, there's business coaches and there's also life coaches. I think it's important when you talk to people and you ask, you know, are you looking for a business coach or a life coach? Because some, while well, they'll do both, some really only help on the business sector, some help really only in life coaching. Um, and so um, I think it's, it's more of identifying what kind of coach you're looking for. And, and then I'll also say this, there's, there are local options. Obviously, I'm a local option, <laughs> um, part of another organization that's local options. You know, there's, there's people out there, yet there's nothing wrong with hiring somebody outside of your area as a coach because of resources like Zoom, um, resources like um, Skype and Google Hangout and those kind of resources, you can connect like this. Yeah, and so um, lots of options. You, and, and I recommend that you interview. Interview your co coach, ask lots of questions before you ever hire someone. Absolutely. So a few things, um, or that I would say to that is that, um, I think Dawn is really great that, um, she makes a great point that it shouldn't be say like a best friend, um, or someone like a family member. Cause oftentimes they can bring some accountability, 
but they're often going to think long term um, about the ramifications of the relationship. For example, uh, there are certain family members that I have that I don't hire for certain jobs because I want to retain the right to fire, right? Mm. Um, and so sometimes it just gets messy when you hire family to do X, Y, Z. So with that being said is you want it to be someone that you can, one, fire, um, but also two, they can, you know, quote unquote, fire you. They can say, without saying, oh, how's Thanksgiving going to look? That's going to be real awkward, you know, or whatever. Um, so a few things with that is, um, I would look for someone who's in your industry or who is doing what you want to do, who has a track record, but also who is currently in, in some degree, in some manner, doing what they're teaching and mentoring on because times change. And like mm -hmm. right now, things have to pivot and things have to adjust and things are always changing in that degree. If you have someone who's giving outdated information, you want to make sure you have someone who is currently doing and succeeding at what you want to do and succeed at. Um, like for example, um, one of the, one of some of the stuff that I do is one, I've joined mentorships where it was a group of people who had, and we had coaches and we would have, um, you know, there was, it was a six week program. I paid into it and we would have weekly, um, zoom calls. We'd have access to call the coaches throughout. We would have homework that we'd have to do and they would really bring a lot of accountability into what we were doing by businesses. Right. Um, there's things like that, right? Um, there are these, like the RIA group, um, say for investors, attending those events not only keeps it on the forefront of your mind, like books and podcasts and stuff of saying, giving you more information so that you can kind of keep touching your goals, like putting a pulse on your goal, right? And kind of keeping it in the forefront of your mind, but finding people in those groups and saying, hey, someone in, in the local area is saying, hey, can we you know, have a standing phone call once a week or once every other week. And we ask mm -hmm. three questions. Um, what, what am I doing right now that is working? What am I doing right now that is not working? And what, you know, should I be doing? Yeah. Um, those are, there's people who I have um, right now that we do those phone calls. We, three simple questions, right? Um, in the beginning, obviously we, it should be someone who knows your goals because they can, you know, you can speak into those things, but just to be honest with someone, hey, you know, I should be doing this, but um, like, for example, there's the book about eating the frog, first thing in the morning, doing that first difficult task. So many of us procrastinate because we have a difficult task that we need to do. I've got two massive files right now that I've been putting off and I told myself no longer, I need to do them. I have these complex deals that I'm working on and I really need to contact multiple attorneys and I've just kind of been pitting it off right now, right? Uh, and so there's things that you need to, we need to tackle the difficult stuff or the stuff that's exhausting or whatnot. Um, so, so maybe it's finding someone who's accountability partner who has a similar drive to you, who's not going to, you know, fizzle off after two weeks of phone calls, right? Um, yeah. Maybe put some incentives in place. There's also people, um, like for example, there's what's called masterminds. Um, I joined my first one this year um, and it has been great. What it is, is it, it's a year long, the one I joined, it's a year long mastermind for real estate investors. And what it is, is they've got, uh, I think we have like 19 CEOs in there. You know, we all own real estate investment firms that do a variety of different things. And now our travels have been thrown off, but some of the things we do is uh, that we've met and we had scheduled for the year, three board boardroom meetings. The first one was in Biloxi in January. And so we got to do that. Um, and what it was is we just sat in a U shape and we had a presentation and we literally went through the numbers. So I, my business partner and I had to do was how many, uh, you know, how many appointments did we go on? How many offers did we make? How many deals did we do? What was our average um, profit per deal? What was, you know, X, Y, Z, what were all our marketing channels? How much did we spend in those marketing channels? How much did those marketing channels produce? Basically, was that a good marketing channel? Was that not a good marketing channel? And then we kind of went over what were our goals and what were, what was something that was really working for us? What was something, what did something we really need? You know, we had an ask and we had a give. The give was what's mm -hmm. going to do well for us. The ask was, Hey, help me in this. Right. And it put us in a hot seat and to have 19 CEOs plus the two people pitting on the event, really be able to talk into it um, has really, you know, helped our business. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things where the mastermind, sometimes you have masterminds like that that are year long where there's multiple meetings throughout the year, 
or it is one of those things. Um, we also have Zoom meetings frequently in between um, those meetings. And so, so ultimately it's finding stuff like that. Um, I know Dawn is a business coach, um, but it's something I would say is all top producers tend to have a few things in common and self-development being really high up on that list. And one of the things is they often have a coach, right? Mm -hmm. And so Dawn talks about having different coaches for different parts of her life. Um, so I would look at, take some of the, the people in your sphere of influence who are top producers who are doing what you want to do. And the very first step I would say is just get around those people more. And look, I know COVID, like it's difficult physically yeah. to get around them. Give them a call. Give them a call. Set up a yeah. Zoom. Or, well, know, and Courtney, you're making a good point with that. Ask the people who have coaches, who's your coach, right? And another right. question that I always ask when I'm interviewing a coach for myself, I'll ask them who's their coach. Yeah. I don't ever want to hire a coach that doesn't have a coach either. Right. Um, because we, we have to watch egos and all those kind of things. So, right. but ask like people, whatever field that you're trying or whatever category in your life, you're looking to get a coach. Find out from people who have a coach in that category and interview their coach. That's a great place to start. That's how I found my, my running coach. I was blessed. Someone um, knew that I was looking for a running coach and said, hey, this is the first thing you need to get. And so when I started research, I was like, yeah, this is the first that I need to get, right? And so I, I would say talk to people who have that coach and get recommendations from them. One of the things I would say is get around these people no matter what. And look, a lot That's of right. times the pick your brain concept that got thrown out there um, I'm not gonna lie that's antiquated right because oftentimes successful people they want to give back but when it is hey I want to pick your brain that is kind of that's so vague yeah. and it can be it I'm not gonna lie I can't like I, I often will go on coffee you know um, I'll take someone out to coffee or lunch or whatever um, who's getting started or, or whatnot but I can't tell you how many times that they've done it and it you know they showed up late or they didn't show or things like that and so for me, um, I can't tell you times I've, I've poured into someone and they just didn't go do anything, right? So there are times where I have to protect my time, those being efficient and time wasting, right? But find ways that you can bring value. But instead of just saying, hey, how can I bring value to you? Maybe say, hey, here's some of my skill sets. Would it be helpful if I did X, Y, Z for you, right? Um, something along those lines. And so getting around those successful people is one of the first things I would start to um, and suggest doing, right? The second thing is, is um, finding out who their coaches are and things along those lines. When you pitch yourself in better rooms, meaning if you're the smartest one in your sphere of influence, you need to find ways to level up and be in, in, in spheres of influence and groups where there are, there are other people who are out producing you so you can learn from them, right? Um, and from there, finding people, because there are so many gurus in the, in the education realm, um, I would highly suggest getting them on personal reference rather than just finding people uh, randomly because I know many people who have taken courses um, or done gotten um, you know mentorships or whatever and they did not pan out at all. Um, for example, there are the weekend events and, and I'm going to do my best to be positive in saying this, but also the mama bear in me comes out is there's those, you get those sponsored ads on your Facebook group where it says, hey, they have, um, come learn about real estate investing from this HGTV star or this person. And it's a, you know, weekend event in New Orleans, they're gonna pay for lunch or, you know, whatever seminar and it's free, free to attend. And all of a sudden you go there and they hype you up and they've got this marketing staff that does a great job and there's the sales pitch, hey, you know, like maybe it's a one night event, two hour event or whatever, and they offer you free lunch or free dinner or whatever. Say, hey, for $300, you can attend a three day event and you know, you can go to the next level with your real estate investing. And so people who are hungry to know, they're like, look, they're hearing these, these testimonials like, oh, I wanna become that. So $300 for a weekend, that's great. They go and then at the three day event, they say, hey, um, you know, if you wanna do this, if you want real estate investing to change your life, you need a mentor. And here's our thirty thousand to one hundred thousand dollar mentorship. And guys, I, I tell you right now, I I've got to keep myself home a lot of the times when I see those, so I can behave. Because there's times I want to go there and stir up some stuff. Because um, that scheme, to me, I see so many people who attend those, and I know multiple people, probably at this point more than a dozen people, 
who paid that thirty to hundred thousand dollars who have not done a deal or they're not where they want to be. And, and so I just want to say, be careful of who you're hiring. Um, and again, you want to kind of pit that coach, that mentorship or that program through the ringer. Uh, Bigger Pockets has a lot of forms. Biggerpockets.com has a lot of forms and you can actually Google and say like, you know, the review of a certain program and stuff like that. Um, obviously nothing is hundred um, percent without, you know, say someone who doesn't have a, um, maybe something to say about it, but at the end of the day, use your gut, get some reviews and do due diligence. Don't just spend money flippantly, you know, um, hopefully that helps Lori. Um, as far as recommendations, apart from Dawn, um, I, I know that, uh, the recommendations I have, um, I have utilized Brent Moreno and Adam Johnson. Um, they're with wholesale hackers, uh, Mississippi. Um, they are also with limitless mastermind that I'm in. Um, and so I've, I've utilized them on a few occasions for mentorships and, uh, mastermind wise, I am currently looking for, um, I probably will be looking at more masterminds for next year. Uh, so that is something to look into, um, the price range generally. So you generally have what'll call, what'll be called a course. And a lot of times what that course is, is like a pre-recorded videos. Here's 21 videos, watch this. And for, you know, 999, 497, 999, whatever it is, watch these videos or, or, or read this binder. And that's a course, right? Um, and, and that could be anywhere from, I've paid $4,000 for a course before. So you can everywhere from 999 to that, right? And the numbers really are subjective, but there's, those are courses. Now, what a mentorship is going to be is someone who's going to be asking you for specific data. A coach should be someone who's asking you for specific data on what you're looking to do and giving feedback on it. So the difference between a course and a coach or a mentor is someone who's actively digging into the nitty gritty of your business, if that makes sense, you guys. Um, so know that know the difference between the two. Look, Jessica, you asked, would you recommend getting a coach at the beginning stages or wait until you have done some business? I say, I personally believe you should wait, bring in revenue and, and, and get your feet wet, do some things. There are many options out there that you can get some guidance. So I'm not saying don't get guidance. I'm saying hold off on paying into these. Um, that is my personal, personal belief, especially when it comes to real estate investing. Um, so there's biggerpockets.com. They have a podcast. I would recommend starting at number one. They're about an hour long. And they're a great introduction to the whole world of real estate investing. And there's over 300 podcasts. So you've got about 300 plus hours. That is a college degree, uh, a master's, if anything. So um, I would say I also have a page on the North Shore RIA's website. I have a resource page that I have a ton of podcasts I recommend, a ton of books I recommend, um, different places. Propelio Academy. Um, so propelio.com slash academy. They have a lot of free webinars um, where like they'll say, hey, if you want to learn about wholesaling, here's 19 videos on it or and they'll get a top person to provide them. It's all free. Uh, I think they have like 21 of them on pre foreclosures. They've got them on like all these different topics. And my friend Daniel Chad Moore has done a fantastic job. He got really burned by one of those weekend seminars and he paid $100,000 into that program and he started doing some deals. But ultimately he realized that it when they specifically told him, son, we're not in the, um, the business of, of, of helping people invest. We're in the business of selling education. We're not in the business of educating. We're in the business of selling education. It's one of those. So be, be mindful of that stuff, right? There's a ton of free resources out there. Get involved in a, like a local real estate investing group. Uh, get involved in different ways that you can, like if you're in a brokerage, if you're a realtor, get with a brokerage that does education. There is a lot of free stuff out there that you can educate yourself on um, because I would be mindful of pitting a lot of revenue out there and in investing in you leveling up if you, um, you know, before you get started. Hey guys, any other questions? What, what else? Um, I, I put a list of some of the books recommended in there and I'll, if I need to, I can go and update them if we add some more. Um, yeah, any more questions? Guys, don't forget you can add it in the Zoom chat or in the Facebook Live. 
Dawn, anything else you want to add? Um, while we're waiting for some questions, um, if you don't have more questions, but Dawn, if there's things that you want to um, talk about or what? Well, I, I, not really. I think we've covered a lot in such a short time. Um, and I'm sure you guys, hopefully your hands have been writing a lot. Um, Courtney, I just want to say thank you again for this opportunity to be before your people. Um, this is my community. These are my types of people. So I'm just honored to be a, pre be a part of it. I'm super excited about what you're doing here on the North Shore. Um, I, I think um, the growth that is about to happen with the opportunity that we're given right now in this season. You know, the economists are telling us that we should still be expecting some type of a shift that's coming through. Um, I'll, I will tell you guys from a real estate perspective of what I see happening in the market. Right now, we are seeing about a 20% reduction in month over month activity to year over year activity um, right now here on the North Shore, yet still a very healthy, viable market. Um, and so we're, you know, part of my job as CEO is to watch those numbers and to, to keep an eye on what is happening. Um, right now, I'm very encouraged. Um, I do think that once we get the whole um, work from home release and people can get back to work, we're going to see movement. We already see some, some lenders that some mortgage, you know, some LO people that are locally that are part of big brands that are releasing some of the COVID-19 um, restrictions that have been placed on people. Um, and so as people get back to work, they're going to get back to buying power. We'll see movement. Um, I also think that um, opportunities to buy investment properties are going to increase through this opportunity as well. We're going to see some opportunities show up on the market. So as investors, I think you guys are about to see, to, to be not a 2008, 2000, you know, seven, 2008 era yet. I think we are going to start seeing some good opportunities, Courtney. And so we just got to be ready for that. Absolutely. Um, so for you guys, um, so in the beginning, if you listened, um, I am going to a closing today at Fort, at Fort Elite, and it is one of my flip projects is, um, let's see, I bought it in, on January 7th, and guys, when it hit the market, within 10 days of being on the market, it had multiple offers. Um, it had, I think we had three offers, and so guys, buyers are still buying right now, so if you're thinking about listing stuff, you know, buyers are definitely still buying. Um, also, guys, if you, um, so, so on the buying side, buyers are still buying. So if you're doing flips right now, I would just be very mindful. Equity is the saving grace all day long, right? Um, so having equity in your deals is what is going to help you if, for example, um, the sales price isn't, you know, exactly where you want it to be. Maybe you have to make some concessions or anything like that. So equity, 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 if you're buying um, anything right now, okay? Um, one of the things I would say is, um, as far as buying things at a discount, I do believe that is coming. I just don't believe um, most sellers are feeling the pain right now. So be patient. I do think you can still buy deals right now. Um, I'm still actively buying. Um, so if you guys come across deals, um, please let me know. I'm still very much actively buying rentals, flips, and um, stuff that I will um, own or finance. Um, also, guys, I do deal with um, complex deals. And so it is one of those things where do your best to set yourself up during this time um, and build your team. Investing is a real estate investing is a team sport. So if um, if you don't have a, a solid team around you, I'd highly suggest building one. Okay. Um, so that when the time comes, you are prepared, get your finances in order and um, other things along those lines. Look, I'm trying to knock out my 2019 taxes. I'm trying to um, knock out, you know, stuff that I've had on the back burner during this time so that, you know, we can go business as usual and we can move pretty effectively. Um, a few things I'm going to say real quick. Um, I put in there propelio.com slash academy for you looking for the, uh, the link for that, you guys. Um, lastly, you know, Dawn, I want to thank you for sharing. Um, and I want to say right now, um, what is what is one thing that you're doing differently? And I'll kind of leave on this thing. 
what is one thing that you're doing as far as you're, you're very much a self-development junkie. I know that much. Um, and as much as I've learned from you, what is, have you changed the books that you're reading right now? What is something that you're doing right now that maybe you weren't doing, you know, three weeks, four weeks ago, maybe even five weeks ago, um, that you are tailoring self-development wise specifically to what's going on? Yeah. Great question. Um, yes. Um, I have, change some things, especially around the books that I'm reading. Um, I'm choosing to read books that are dealing with situations just like now. Um, you know, um, I want to learn from others, people who've gone through these situations and how they got through these situations in the past. So obviously, you know, the um, tough times never last, but tough people do. That's a great resource as well to tap into. But yeah, I'm, I'm specifically looking, matter of fact, my Amazon deliveries every day of books has been insane because that's what I have access access to and just literally reading through situations like this. So um for me, I've all everything I've done in my life is because I've learned it from a book. That's excellent. Look for you guys who are um looking, I uh these are ones that I pulled specifically out of my bookshelf um in March and said, you know what, I changed the books I was reading and these are ones that I'm reading right now. So if you can see, I do a lot with pre-foreclosures, so I've just been buying books with those. So we've got, uh, this is one about the economy. It's called Aftershock. We've got um, how to be a quick turn real estate um, entrepreneur in any economy, building wealth in a changing market, smart money guide to bargain homes. This is a pre-foreclosure one, short sale pre-foreclosure investing how to make money on foreclosures. I'll, because this is what I do for a living, I will read anything to build my skill set, making money, investing in real estate. And then the Spinner's Guide to Debt-Free Living. Finances, it's huge, guys. I, um, I'm finishing up on Gary Keller's um, shift. Um, and that's another one, guys. So the lastly, guys, um, so do what you can. Look, um, we're going to be sharing this video um it's going to be on the north shore rias page so that if you want to rewatch it you can um and, and so what i'm gonna ask you guys if you got anything out of today i'm gonna to ask can you go like that video on our north shore ria page and can you share it um because i think this is something that many people could benefit from um and it's something that we want to continue to give you stuff that it's helpful for you so um other than that dawn thank you so much for sharing with us if there's anything else you want to share um you're more than welcome to before we finish out Mm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just honored, humbled, and just thank you, Courtney, for the opportunity. Thank you for all of our viewers, our listeners, um, for just giving up your time today and spending it with us. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday. And again, if you don't mind liking and sharing this video on our, on our Facebook page, um, if you got anything out of it, okay? You guys have a great day. Stay tuned for the next webinar. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.